our behalf. Welcome to Glad. Be with us in the pews, but you're in our heart, and we believe that God is going to speak to you during this service. Hey, we got some exciting news, men. Men's breakfast, 9 a.m. February 11th with Pastor Israel Pokhtar. He is an amazing man. That man, boy, he is so brilliant understanding Bible prophecy. And so this is going to be a time that you do not want to miss. Men, it's all about you. And then that following Sunday, February 12th, Pastor Israel Pokhtar is going to be having a service here with us at 10.30. And then also, we're going to come back at 6.30, at 6 p.m., I'm sorry, and have another service. This is an amazing man of God from Israel, and he is going to bring us up to a greater understanding of the Word of God through Bible prophecy, through a Jewish perspective. Everybody wants to be here. Be sure and invite somebody that you know that would be touched by this special, special, special service that we're going to be having. Well, how many people are ready to praise God? We, we are so ready. Father, we love you. We thank you. You are an amazing God and you are doing great things. You have done great things. And we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name.
do He will stand by His word He will come through God will do What He said He would do He will stand by His word He will come through sin Oh God will do what He said
against me shall prosper Lift your hands with me. Just sing it. Just declare it. Just declare it over your life. Just declare victory over your life right now. Just declare it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare victory. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've got the victory. Hallelujah. Jesus, just Lord, hallelujah. I don't know about you, I just absolutely love being here. I have to go downtown quite a bit, and parking, the meters are expensive. How many know that? But how many know the tickets are more expensive? Yes. And I, I have to go down. So I just went and got $25 worth of loonies. I wanted to be prepared. And I stuck that dollar in there and I looked at it. 15 minutes. Somebody help me this place. 15 minutes. How many would stand down there and just watch the cars? I, 15 so I stuck another one in, and I don't know what was wrong with my mind, but I thought it'd at least go up to 45, 30 minutes. Life seems to wear us out, doesn't it? Hello? Just wear and wear and wear. But the presence of the Lord makes you a winner. Moses had a serious talk with God. I can't do it. I won't do it. He said, but however, if you go with me, I'll do it. Put your hands with me right now. The Lord is with us. The Lord is with you. He's in your battle. He's in your situation. The Lord, the living God, is with you. He is with you. He's mighty in battle. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the giver of life. And listen, he's the way maker. He makes a way where it's impossible. We just thank you, Jesus. I just want to tell you tonight, I love you. Come on, tell him, I love you. I love your house. And Lord, I love your people. There's no place I'd rather be than in your house with your people. We thank you for tonight. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Amen. Do something. Greet somebody. Smile at them. Tell them you look good. Come on, tell them that right. You look real good. Hallelujah. You look so good. Hallelujah. You look good. 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 Come on, help me, everybody. You look good. Hey, 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 baby. Hey, 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 hey. You look real good, baby. I'll tell you that right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was convicted today of a little thing. I don't know if you'd call it sin, but I was just convicted. Really busy day, and I'm going to bring filet mignon 
from the pulpit to the greatest people on the earth. If you're not Jewish, I'm going to bring lobster. But we always bring the very best to God's people. Well, it's Wednesday night. You bring the best on Wednesday night, and you bring the best on Sunday, and you bring the best on the television program. You just bring the best. And I was running through the building. I had to do something real quick, and I saw the chairman of Glad Tidings with his arm around a, a man sit in the front row and the Lord just spoke to my heart he said this is what we do help people I know that's a revelation but I'm just busy and running and had great fellowship with Pastor Kay and did this and made a phone call and was in the word and I just run in and I see this guy there and I don't remember what Gary said, but he's something like, oh, our brother's crying, something to that effect. And I stopped everything. Nothing mattered. Every prayer we prayed is about that dear man. And how many of us miss the moments where we've been praying? And I stopped everything. I turned my phone off, no one saw it. I didn't want to hear anything. And Mr. Chairman and I sat on both sides of him, and we loved him up good, good. Just Gary ministered to him, and I just said to him something to the effect, do you want all your sins forgiven? And he looked at me like, is that possible? And I said, Jesus, someone say Jesus. The blood of Jesus. And then I threw Gary under the bus. Gary's there, and I said, I know you feel bad for what you've done, but Gary's done horrible things. <laughs> Slap somebody. Come on, help me right now. I'm telling you, Gary is a notorious sinner. Pastors sinned. We've all sinned. But Jesus forgives all sin. He cried harder. I said, would you like to ask Jesus in your heart? Now, I know I'm busy on television. I want somebody to yell at me right now. I know how important I am. I know my sermons are divine. I understand all that. But the dear man's more important than me. I said, would you like your sins forgiven? And would you like someone who can run your life better than you? Gary, I don't think I'm embellishing in this. I just, we're just there. And, I said, you pray after me if you mean it. Lord Jesus. He goes, Lord Jesus. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hallelujah for my sin. And he asked Jesus and Gary hugged him. And, and I left and went back to my religious nonsense. It is good when people are born again. It is good when people are saved. It's good. Hallelujah. You know, I... How many of God healed? Let me see your hands right now. How many of God has healed you? How many of you God has delivered you? This is the truth. He really delivered you. How many of you God brought money when you were out of money? Hallelujah. But God says those are good things. But the greatest thing is when someone's name is written in the book of life. That's the greatest thing. Can I take a moment? Would you just pray for me right now? Father, for the, our family around the world online, some of you are away from God tonight. Somehow, some way, you used to love him, used to serve him, but you're away from him, and you would say, God, I, I want to come back home. I, I want to serve you. And you would say tonight, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I have sinned and I'm wrong. I have no excuses. And I ask that your precious blood would cleanse me. And I confess you to be my Lord and Savior. Lord, I don't want to just believe in you. I'm going to serve you from this day forward. Jesus be the Lord of everything in my life come into my heart and I confess that Jesus Christ you're my Lord and Savior stand with me for a moment if you would we haven't done this in a, a long time would you just tell two people that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior would you do that right now would you look at somebody just tell them Jesus is my my Lord and my Savior hallelujah Hallelujah. Glory to God.
Galatians. The ushers are going to hand everybody an envelope. Galatians. Chapter 6. You may be seated. Online, you can e-transfer or send it to 3456 Fraser Street, Vancouver, British Columbia, and right on Fraser Street, we have a mailbox. You can put it in there. Here's what the Word says. Let us not grow weary. in doing good for in due season I did something funny today all by myself and I laughed at myself I did I said oh I counted the days till spring because it was raining so hard and I said to myself spring is coming even though I had my old man rubbers that go over my shoes and I was out in the rain, I said, spring is coming. Someone say with me, due season. Due season. God says, due season. It says, don't become weary in doing good. In due season, we shall reap. Huh. We'll try that again. We shall reap. Say with me, I'm going to reap, you can weep. I'm going to reap. But there's a condition. Look what the condition is in the Word of God. It says this, if we don't lose heart. If we don't lose heart. Your tithe, your seed, is not religious. It is seed in the ground, and God declares that you will have a harvest you have a harvest but you can't lose heart you got to give and you got to keep your faith going you got to keep your faith going got to keep it you got to speak life words you got to look you got to believe you got to work hard i'll say that again you got to work hard and god says that you will have a harvest. I want you to stand with me tonight, and I want you to say over yourself, I've got a harvest. Come on, everybody. No, and I got a, I got a harvest. Just say it out loud. I'm not going to drive this car that doesn't start forever. Hallelujah. Somebody have a little fun with me. My toupee is 35 years old. I'm getting me a new one. Come on, somebody. Help me now. Hallelujah. That you're going to have a harvest. How many last year difficult year can say God gave you some harvest. Let me see your hands right now. That's so good. That is so good. Hallelujah. Say it with me, but it's not enough. Hallelujah. It's not enough. God has more for you. So I just use my faith. Hold your seat up right now. I use my faith according to the word of God. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Let your seasons change and let the blessing of the Lord intervene on your life in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Would you say this with me? There's certain times when you need a fat burger. Someone say a fat burger. And we were downtown on Broadway. We just decided that we we're going to not diet. And they begin to ask me what I want on it. I said, I, I don't know. Well, do you want this? Yeah. Do you want that? Yeah. Do you want a single or double? Double. What kind of cheese? I'll say, I, I said, I'll take all three. I want this and I want that. And I want this and I want that. Hallelujah. And they just kind of looked at me, okay. And then I said this. 
where do you give the tip? And they said, oh, right here. I said, you guys are the best. And they will thank you. I'm the pastor of Glad Tidings Church. Oh, we've heard of that great place. They said that, tip. And I pulled out a 20, and I heard the cook in the back go, yeah. And they all together, it was the weirdest thing. If you've ever been there, they all together said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your promotion. Thank you for your promotion. Thank you for your promotion. God's blessing makes us fat. His blessing does what we can't do. It's beyond our IQ, it's beyond our enthusiasm, it's beyond our education, it's beyond our resources, it's beyond everything. But promotion, the Bible says, comes to everybody, every single person. Tonight will be a wonderful word, but there are always conditions to what God says. I've seen people get a crazy out of this world prophecy, and I just sat there in awe. Some of my friends got prophecies that were just like, hey, how come they got that big word? And most of them never fulfilled it. And I was the crumb dude. How many know the crumb? Remember the Gentiles said, Lord, even the dogs get crumbs from the table. And so my first 20 years in Jesus, I just got crumbs, but I did what God said. And I kept getting promoted. Somebody help me in this place. I kept getting, I wasn't the, I wasn't the fastest, the smartest. I wasn't the most educated. I didn't have any of my, all my family's in jail. All of them are divorced and all of them are drunk. That was my heritage. But I did what he said. And I'm going to say this to you in promotion. In every promotion, listen closely, I'm going to show you in the Word tonight. There's a Potiphar's house. It's a house that you really don't feel called to. Then there always is a prison. I'd write this down. There's a prison. It's a place of absolute confinement when you can't move, you can't think, and you can't breathe. How many have been in the prison? And then there's a palace. And the palace is interesting because by the time you get the palace, you'll see the promotion wasn't about you. It was about God using you for everybody else. You see, what we think is in promotion, oh, everybody's going to see me. Everybody's going to know God's hands on me. It's never about you. It's always helping others. See, the promotion needed wisdom in the palace because in the palace there was a famine that was going to kill everybody. But he got a prophetic word what to do. He had a strategy from the Lord and he did it. So what happened during the famine, what's it say? The nations came to him. And you said, why did I get taken out of my promised place the place where I was comfortable, the place where I had a coat, the place where my father loved me, the place where I felt safe, why did I get taken out of the place? Because the place you're at is not gonna always be safe. The place you're at will have a famine that you didn't know would come, and you will not survive if you don't go to where God wants you to go. Better hear this tonight. We've got false doctrine, false promises, People are running around with empty heads and joyful hearts, and it never happens. I'm going to tell you the truth tonight. I need somebody to just take a moment and say, I know it's Wednesday night, but preach it, boy. Come on, somebody. Just preach it right now. Huh? Preach it at me right now. Get the silly thoughts out of my head. Get it out of my head. Get the truth inside of me. Thank you, worship team. I, I won't preach forever. I'll, I'll let you just go and... Come on back. The first thing in promotion that has to take place, look at the Word of God. First Peter. Chapter 5. And verse 5 and 6. Look, look, look what the Word said. This is the Word of God. 
It says, humble yourself. The word says, likewise, you younger people, submit yourself to your leaders. How many want it for real? If you can't submit your heart to a pastor, if you can't submit your heart to an elder, if you can't submit your heart to a parent, God will never use your life and you'll never have a promise come true in your life. You better hear this tonight. Everybody's smarter than the word of God, but their lives don't turn out. And I'm in a real good mood tonight. Smile with me. Promotion comes by humbling yourself. Pastor Iverson was probably one of the top one half of 1% of leaders, architects in building the house of God. And everybody wanted him to come to their conference and he was always the keynote. And there would be what we would call second and third string preachers all during the day. But the big time is the nighttime. And he always got the nighttime. But you know that the little preacher, the third string preacher that was trying to burp out something, you know Pastor Iverson was in the front row with his Bible open and listening to him. We'll try that again. And then the, the next guy, he, he was there, and the next guy was there. Did you know that every session of everybody else, even though he was the biggest, I learned that principle. We planted a church in Mexico in the state of Naharit. It became the largest church with 22 satellites, and I was the spiritual father. Do you know what it meant that I sat in the front row and amen those young men? I said to myself, there's only, and by the way, I did all the nights. Somebody yell at me right now. Hallelujah. But you know what? God can turn off the light. And I understood the kingdom of God. Even though I was a leader, me being there, what was I doing? Humbling myself under the mighty hand of God. Here's what the Bible says. If you will humble you, how many believe that God has more for you than what you have right now? How many believe? How many believe? I don't think that's fantasy. I don't. I don't think you made it up in your head. I believe God has more, and I believe most of us will go to sleep and never possess it because we didn't do the Word. We didn't do the Word of God. I, I did not like school. I just didn't like it. I, in my mind, I thought, why do I have to learn electrical current? Why? I'm never going to be an electrician. If it doesn't work, you call someone and they fix it. I need somebody to think like me. And they're telling me things that I didn't care about. And then I also knew that the teachers that were telling me were all underpaid and they couldn't afford life. So I got an underpaid teacher trying to tell me something. And I'm doing with me the V. I know all. I see all. I'm something special. But they kept flunking me. I flunked kindergarten. Say, oh my. The only reason I made it the second year, my dad was six foot four, and he said, I brought you into the world. I want to tell you, you little punk, I told your mom we shouldn't have had you, and I want to let you know this right now. Very clearly, read my lips. I will kill you. You cannot be as big as you are because the desk, you can't sit in. Somebody yell at me right now. My dad, and my dad, the second year of kindergarten, he walked in there and said, here's my phone number. I'll kill him. So I wiggled through and I got through kindergarten. Then first grade, they said, well, you flunked. But we have a remedy. You get to go to summer school all June and July. Then the second grade, somebody yell at me right now. Same thing happened. The third grade, the same thing happened. The fourth grade, the same thing happened. The fifth grade, the same thing happened. The sixth grade, the same. Then I went into school, and they didn't have summer school anymore, but they had this special test you took. So on Monday, I just went A, A, A on it. Tuesday, I went B, 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 and I was average. Somebody help me in this place. So now God gets a hold of me. I'm a junior in high school. And I can't read or write. 
I can't do anything. I can play basketball. Phenomenal. I can walk by the girls, hey, baby, baby, I feel something between us. You know what I'm talking about, sweetheart? So I could do the girl, I could do the basketball, I could do the car, I could do the hair, but I couldn't do anything else. And God said, I can't use you, I can't bless you unless you begin to wake up. And I was so full of myself. I got a pr prophetic word that I was going to be the student body president of my high school. It was a prestigious high school, and I had a grade point of 0.8. <laughs> Even when I cheated, I flunked. And God made me the student body president. Anyway, they waived my grade point. And the Lord said, I can't use you. So some of you, this isn't much, but I started getting C's. I, somebody, I, I, I need some slow learners like me to just shout right now. This is your moment. I started getting C's. My mom act like I was a genius. You know, my son got a C. She's just bragging. Huh. Humble yourself. Someone say it. Humble yourself. Look what it says, God resists the proud. What are you flunking at when God wants you to pick it up? What attitude are you carrying? Do you really think you're all that? You have to apply yourself in the kingdom of God. Listen to me closely. For God to use your life. I'm not telling you that you can get straight A's. I am telling you that you can be better than you are and humble yourself and do what God tells you to do. Would someone say praise the Lord? See, God resists. He's resisting my pride. I had this pastor I was going to have come here. He, 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 he's a great guy. But he went on a rampage for seven minutes telling me how great he is in all the churches that he's traveling to. And I said, I don't want him. He blew the deal because he wasn't humble. See, the Bible says that God resists pride. <laughs> this is so stupid. I worked at a shoe store. It was called Kenny Shoes. How many remember that junk? And I went in there humbly, and the Lord said, tell him you'll work for him if he gives you 10% of everything you sell. Now, these other guys back then are making about $3 an hour. And then they get 1% commission on top of that as their bonus. He goes, you want what? I said, I want 10%. He said, well, why should I pay you 10%? I said, because I'm going to tithe 10%. Well, what does that have to do? I said, if I don't make you a lot of money, then just fire me. These guys are making, just do $3 times eight. They're making $24, and I'm making three to $500 a day. He says, is 10% enough? God's hand was on me for promotion. I would thank him for the job. Is there anything I can do better? I always spoke well of him because I need promotion. I don't want to live in a place where I don't do everything God wants me to do. This will get better, maybe. Someone say, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and in due season, God's going to promote you. You're going to see incredible promotions on people's life, that there will be a jealousy on them that, that will make them sick because of what God has done in your life. You better hear this tonight. Luke chapter 14, verse 10, the Lord says, take the lowest place. Take the lowest place. Take, take the place that's low, low. And then when you're at that table at the lowest place, then God said what they'll do is they'll whisper to you, wait, why don't you sit up closer? Why don't you sit up higher? It'll happen. It'll happen. 
my, my, my son went in for a major interview. It was a job for a 50-year-old. It was a personal attorney to the county executive, the most powerful elected person over the whole region. He shouldn't have got an interview. And they asked the young man, what do you think about this, this, or this? And he said, I don't have the right to think or say what I think. I'm here to think like you think. They hired him on the spot. Hired him on the spot. I'm telling you, people can dance around, shout, stand on one foot, spin around. Y'all should have bought a Honda, but that won't bring your promotion. Your promotion comes by your submitting to the word of God and those in your life. God will always bring some in your life that you don't appreciate, but God put you there for a reason because he's getting you out of you. This is not going to get better yet. Just stay with me, though. 1 Kings chapter 2 and verse 15, Adonijah. Adonijah. The Bible says he promoted himself, and then he got 50 guys to yell through Israel that he's the king. David heard it, but he ignored it because he was old and cold. Solomon had a promise, but it wasn't happening because Adonijah was on the throne that he was called to. There's always going to be somewhere, someone where you belong. There's always going to be somebody promoted in a place, but they're not permanent. God has say over that. He was removed, but look what he said later in 1 Kings chapter 2 and verse 15. The kingdom was mine. He still didn't get it. He's telling that to Solomon's mom, who wasn't very happy with him. He said, you know, the kingdom was mine, but things changed. For the kingdom has come to Solomon, listen, by the Lord. By the Lord. You can use your charisma, you can use your wiggle, you can use your flattery. But if you didn't learn how to humble yourself, you might get the position, but you're going to lose it. Thank you for donating your blood to the blood bank tonight. <laughs> Esther chapter 5 and verse 9, Haman was happy and high in spirit. Esther chapter 5 and verse 9, it says that Haman was happy and high in spirit. He built the gallows for Mordecai the anointed one. And Mordecai humbled himself before God, even though he saw the gallows, even though the king said, oh, kill him. But the king didn't know he said, kill Mordecai. And so when this happened, they put Haman over everything, and he said, I am going to kill Mordecai. I'm going to say this to you. You're hangproof. We'll try it again. You're hangproof. If you will humble yourself before God, I'm going to say, you're hangproof. I have seen God take out people on my behalf. I've seen people come against me, rally people against me, and I've seen them swing. Come on, somebody, hear me tonight. And God will do the same for you if you'll stay humble. You'll submit to yourself. You'll submit to authority. I'm telling you, there's a promotion for every person here, every person online. There is a promotion Haman was happy and high in spirit. He thought you're going to get hung and wiped out. I'm going to tell you, you're not going to get hung. You're not going to be wiped out. If you'll humble yourself. Esther chapter 7 and verse 10. Haman hanged on the gallows prepared for Mordecai. He, he built the gallows right in front of his condo on the fifth floor. And he had a balcony, and he had it all set up. And he was going to watch this guy swing. He perfectly set it up so he had the best view of the hanging. And it appears that you're going to get hung. It appears you're going to be wiped out. It appears you're going to be destroyed. But I want to let you know tonight what they put up for you, they're going to hang on it. 
that God will cause that which came against you, you will have the view. Huh? Is it getting better? I said, is it getting better? <laughs> Somebody right into tonight, just get a little witness on you about this word. Hallelujah. Say it right now. Some of you are a little, little wild. Just say it. Hang them high, Lord. Come on, somebody. Whew. I have seen them hung. Now, listen to the word. If you rejoice over their calamity, the curse on them will come on you. So if you're going to get happy, do it quick. Just go, huh. okay, on to something else here. Hallelujah. But we will say this again. Say it out loud. Hang them high, baby. Come on, everybody. Hang them high. Genesis 37. Genesis. Would someone say, mm, the word is good. Someone say it right now. Oh, oh, oh. this is good stuff. Hallelujah. Deal with my wife. This is real good stuff. <laughs> Chapter 37, the first place in promotion you have to go is to Potiphar's house. And I want to say this to you. It's the will of God. It's not your house. And I want everybody to hear this. Unless you make someone else's success, God will never give you your promotion. I'll say it again. Unless you make someone else a success, God will never give you a promotion. I, I, I have to go to Cedar Woolley because Cedar Woolley wasn't three months I was the youth pastor. It was four years. And I was culturally, culturally completely out of my world. Completely. It, 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 I'm living in a house that can see the ocean. I see, need somebody to help me right now. I'm not going to wear a Timex. I'm going to wear a Rolex. And I'm in a place that I don't understand the conversation. I don't understand this. I believe in hygiene. They didn't. And it was just, I was just so out of place. It just wasn't me. How many believe in a toothbrush? I want somebody to shout at me. How many believe in deodorant? Hallelujah. I need the women. How many believe? Women, help me now. You pluck the brow. How many believe these things? And it was just so culturally just weird. Weird. And then my culture, you, don't, you, don't, you can do a little pat, shake a hand, but you don't bear hug people. And these grandmas would just come, oh, God's going to, and just bear hug me. I'd just, Jesus, oh, Lord, just bear hug me and kiss me. Help me out. That's so nice. Come on, help me out, everybody. I love it. I just bear hug me. Come on, come here for a second. Bear hug your pastor. I want some love. <laughs> and you're beautiful. And your eyebrows look perfect. Come on, somebody, help me right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's it, it just like, I, I am in outer space. I can't handle it. God, why am I here? When I preach, I have to use a picture Bible. It was just so, it wasn't one year. It wasn't two years. It wasn't three years. It wasn't four years. God made it long enough, there was no more of me left. And I cried when I left. And I loved the people. And I loved the presence of God. It was the place I learned to flow in the Holy Ghost. He gave me the Sunday night services. And, and the music was a, a little stiff. How many know what stiff is? It's just a little stiff and a little this. And just, you know, it's just hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, and that's good. But I, I like it better this way. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I said, Lord, help put a thunderous sound in this place. And he said, oh, pastor, just do whatever you want. And two brothers from Haiti showed up at the church. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, these two brothers, hallelujah. And even when they walked, do it with me. 
Even when they walked, they came to the church. We've come to worship the Lord. And one was a drummer. I'm telling you, it was just crazy. Hallelujah. And they began to play the drums. And, and, and pastor wore the same suit every Sunday. Hallelujah. He just had his perfect bald head that was shaved perfectly. And in the front row. And then God began to move. And they got the, the, the guitar going. And everybody started going this way. And the pastor jumped. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But I had to go there to learn to flow here. We'll try it again. I had to go there. See, nobody wants to go to Potiphar's house. Everybody wants to build their house. But Potiphar's house is the place you learn things. It's the place where you get manners. It's the place where all you think about is making the house and someone else successful. See, everything in our culture is about us. What do I get? Years ago, we're looking for a worship leader, and this guy was good. He was good, but he put on it, I need this many days off a year. I need this much vacation time, and I need this much money. And being swayed by the devil, <laughs> I said, I don't care how good he is. I don't care how talented he is. We aren't giving that fool a dime. How many know what I just said right there? And my little girl came to me, busy with babies. All she was forever was pregnant. My son-in-law came to me and said, I'll take care of the babies. Pastor, don't pay us. We just want to worship Jesus. And the glory of the Lord came in the house. Say Potiphar's house. Say it louder. Say Potiphar's house. Hallelujah. It says this in Genesis 37, 36. The enemy of the Jew, the Midianites, sold him for 20 shekels. You got to hear this. The first thing that will happen when God's going to give you your promotion you'll find out that your value has to be in Christ because people will devalue you. They will look at you. I want to just talk to you because I love you and I'm your father. Because your English isn't perfect, they've already said you're not smart. Huh. And your hope is in Christ. Your calling is in Christ. Your purpose is in Christ. It's not in what they pay for you, what they sold you for. Let me tell you how valuable you are. The blood of Jesus was shed for every one of us. And our value is more valuable than anything on the earth. It says this in Genesis 37, 36, sold for 20 shekels, and then they sold him again. How many here have ever been sold out by somebody that you trusted and loved? Sold out. And then you're sold out again. You couldn't hardly make it the first time. God, I don't know if I'm going to make it this time. And it says this. He was an official, I love it, to Pharaoh. You see, where you're at is the steps to get where you're supposed to go. The connections you're making right now, I, I'm going to say this on the behalf of young people. You better talk nice to them. I'm going to say this to you right now. You better talk nice to young people. You better respect the call of God on their life because someday God's going to raise them up and they're going to be in charge. And they will remember you. Don't think they won't remember how you treated them. They take notes. And they put them up and they memorize them and they say together, the husband and wife, we hate them. <laughs> you better remember, they're not always going to be young. I'm on a plane. There's this African-American pastor. And God said to me, show him love. Show him love. I didn't, know any, I didn't know he was a pastor. I didn't know anything about him. 
And I, I went to him. I said, hey, I'm Pastor Shaw. Oh, I know you. Well, <laughs> my mom said I preach better than Billy Graham, so I understand that. My mom embarrassed me so bad. She'd tell, my son's a preacher, and he's the next <laughs> Billy Graham. <laughs> we had three people in the church. It was Billy Slam. And I went to him. I said, what are you doing? He said, well, I just moved to Seattle, and they put me over Teen Challenge. And I said, really? So you get the church kids that the parents were hypocrites, and they went on drugs. Huh? Sorry, I made you mad. You talk bad about the preacher and bad about the church, your kids will not serve God. You better hear me right now. They will not serve God. And if you did that to your parents, tell them, your kids, tell them I sinned. Well, this is self-serving. You're the pastor. You try to get everybody to talk about it, a good, nice about you. Oh, that'll never happen. Not worried about that. There's always somebody dumb. How do you talk about me, babe? And I, I just reached out. Then he shows up at the church. Now, the church there was like Sunday here. Just do with this with me about Sunday. Shazam. Come on, somebody. Help me right now. Whoa, God's here. God is here. I'll just say, God is in this house. Someone say, Sunday, Sunday wasn't funny. It was God. Ask me how much God was here. Ask me. I repented of sins that I haven't committed yet. I mean, God was in this place. Like, oh, God, you're holy. You are so phenomenal. And he showed up at the church. And I don't say this condescending, but not just anybody could preach at our church. I'm not saying I'm good, but I'm saying Rod Parsley's good. I'm saying Paula White's good. I'm saying Jesse DePlanet's good. He was kind of like the place. So I couldn't give it to Howdy Doody. I couldn't give it to you. Oh, 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 the, the Bible. You know, there has to be a splash on him. And he came to the church. I said, do you think you can preach? He said, oh, yeah. I said, well, we're going to find out tonight, and we're going to take a big offering for you. Now, this is really important. And I'm not embellishing any of this. And he did phenomenal. But 20 years later, I felt the Holy Spirit telling me he's in the inner city. He's overseeing a big mission, but he's in the inner city in a church doing a phenomenal job. But I just felt in my spirit he was in transition. And I called Pastor Calvin. I said, he was renting a building. I said, can I call this guy? He said, do whatever you want. So I called this pastor and I said this to him. I said, are you in transition? He said, oh, no. Would you be open to a church emerge? I don't, I don't think so. But he remembered what I did to him. And he trusted me in Potiphar's house on the plane. Where you're at is important right now. Who you talk to is important right now. How you talk to people is important right now. Because it will bring about your palace. Without proper behavior in Potiphar's house, you will never be in the palace. Yes. Yes. He said, well, I'll go to lunch with him. So the two of them went to lunch. I'm out. I'm just praying. I'm out. And then about six months later, he goes, you know, my wife and I have been praying. We feel like there's a change coming. We'd be really interested in talking to you, Pastor Cal uh, uh, Calvin, and it happened. I'll say it again. And it happened. What's more, and it happened. You see, the interaction of where you're at will determine where you go. And he could have just said no, but he said, I don't think so. And then he said, well, maybe. And then it, it happened. Is somebody getting this tonight? He was sold to Potiphar, but he was an official to Pharaoh. 
I don't want to think too much about COVID. I don't, I, I don't want to. But it was kind of interesting how many countries and people got it. It was kind of interesting. And I thought about it. I just meditated on it. One person got it, another person got it, and then another person got it, and then another person got it, and then another nation got it, and another continent got it. I, I just thought about that. God works the same way. That's an artificial, demonic one, but there's a God one. There's a God one. I'm going to say this. God is going to speak to someone on your behalf. Genesis 39, verse 2, the Lord was with Joseph. This is so important. Your worship is life and death. Because every one of us feel like the breath has take, been taken from us. Every one of us feel beat up. Every one of us feel sold out. Every one of us feel worthless. Every one of us feel like nothing's working out for me. I'm trapped. I'm a slave. I never have a future. But listen, the Lord was with him. And when the anointing is here, you worship God. You forget your problems momentarily, and you say, God, you are my life. Hallelujah. God, I will praise you in the good times and the bad times. God, when I don't feel you, I don't see you, I don't sense you, I will bless the Lord, and his praises will continually be in my mouth. So what happened? The Lord was what? With him. In a place he didn't feel called to, in a place that wasn't his final destiny, the Lord was with Joseph, and watch what happened here in verse 2. He was successful. He was successful. How many know that God wants to make you successful in your pain? God wants you to be sex successful when you're really not where you're ultimately going to go. But look where the success came. Look in the Word, what it says. He was successful in the house. in Potiphar's house. He wouldn't been successful in Bimbo's house. He wouldn't been successful in the club. He, he wouldn't be successful in all these other places. Where was his success? And the place where it's the will of God, and the will of God is a place where often you don't have any choices. I am so grateful for the people who dare took a chance on me and invested in me. I'm so grateful for Everett Rowell, who is the greatest preacher I've ever heard, who came to the States from India. And the biggest crowds he would preach to is about 15 people. When he came from India and he was preaching to 20,000. But the Holy Spirit told him to come to America and he was going to raise up young men who its voices would be heard around the world. I'm so grateful for what I saw in this great man of God who is willing to go to the prison and find me. I would never do what I've done without him. He was successful where? in the house. Verse 4, Genesis 39. Look what he did. Found favor. Found favor. Favor isn't given, it's found. Favor is not magical, it's found. It's found by your demeanor. It's found by your attitude. It's found by your humility. Someone said to us, we were moving things, and they said, oh, I'm allergic to work. i got to be honest. You, you, some of you won't like this. Right then, he was out of my favor. He said, well, that's kind of harsh. No, he's out of my favor. Now, he can get it back, but you can't have a mouth. Hello. How many of you have ever been fired before? You've ever been fired? Let me see your hands right now. And those of you who've been fired before, would you please say, there's a possibility it wasn't the devil, it was me. Would you just say that? It was a possibility. <laughs> Zach Bigley's in the car with me, and he said this pastor's name. Do you know Pastor Mark Coward from Colorado Springs? I said, yeah, I preached for him. You preached there? Yeah. 
You preach there. Yeah, great man of God, great scholar. I love him. I admire him. I respect him. Why do you bring him up? He fired me. I said, what? He fired me. And I'm saying to myself, Mark doesn't fire anybody. He's just soft-hearted. He's a good guy. And I, I finally said, what did you do? He said, well, I thought pretty highly of myself. And they, I was a custodian. And, and not only was I thought highly of myself, I was a custodian, but I showed up an hour late, two hours late every single day. And he had warned me, and I didn't listen to him because I'm me. I said, I said, Zach, I didn't know you were this much of a loser. <laughs> I, I knew you were a loser, but not this level of a loser. You're a high loser. He said, I sure am, Pastor. But I, he said, I, I'll tell you what, every time I had an attitude, I thought about it. And then Zach is so prophetic, and he said, Pastor, God told me that Mark Coward didn't do it. I fired you. Oh. Whoa. Someone say, whoa. you got to find some favor. If you want promotion, someone say, i got to get some favor. No, I need some favor. Somebody smile in this place. Come on, somebody. Someone smile in this place. Then it says in the word, can I just keep preaching for a minute? Verse 5. The blessing of the Lord was on all, everything in that house, for Joseph's sake. Look, God wants to anoint you in the place you don't want to be. And he wants to put an anointing on your life so everything where you're at is blessed. Everything is blessed because of the anointing on your life. The fragrance, the, the mood, the atmosphere changes because of your spirit and your attitude. Pout brings doubt, and doubt doesn't please God. I do giggle at my... Daughter, she has three little girls, and I do giggle at the resistance to her desires from her daughters. There, there's a high level of enjoyment on my part. Because if I said to my daughter, I want to give you a million dollars, she'd say no before I finished this sentence because she didn't hear what I wanted to do. She was the no girl. How many had any no kids? No, not doing it. Don't want to. Don't have to. You can't make me. And her little her youngest daughter is just beyond beautiful. Have you ever seen little kids that are so beautiful you don't even want to scold them? They're just so beautiful. And so my daughter goes in there saying, now it's time to pick up your toys. And she stands up with her belly hanging out with a diaper. Not my daughter, her daughter. And, 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 and she stands up and said, not doing it. Not doing it. Now I want to ask this question. Has God asked you to do something and you've stood up in your diaper and said not doing it? How many of you said to God, I am not doing it. I don't care. Let me quickly tell you what I did. God had called me in the ministry and I said to God, not doing it. I'm an only child. I'm afraid of people. I can't do it. God, I don't care if you call me or not. Kill me. I am not doing it. I got a horrible disease a month later. I did. And I said to God, I've reconsidered. <laughs> I've reconsidered. <laughs> I've reconsidered. <laughs> I will do what you want me to do. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll change what you want me to say. I'll do anything for you. Is there anybody here that's done saying, not doing it? Not doing it. Say it with me. Yes, Lord. Say it better. Yes, Lord. Yes, King. Yes, Supreme Authority. You know, I admire my, my wife. I, di I didn't ask her. I didn't ask her to pray about it. I said, we're going to Vancouver. Going to Canada. Going to Glad Tidings. 
The Lord told me 20 years ago, and we're just going. And she could have, she, I bought her a beautiful knife set for Christmas. She could have taken those out and just start flinging them at me. She could have thrown herself on the floor, and she said, well, I'm packing. I'm packing. And she's not a blonde dimwit. She's not a pushover. I need more prayer. How many will pray for me? She's not a pushover. She's not someone that I just say, hey. <laughs> hey, I, I want to let you know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know I am afraid of you. You know that. <laughs> but she's not a pushover. She's not someone, if I go off in the wrong direction, she say, oh, the Lord is so good. She'll say, we're going to die for this. <laughs> she is. But she just said, I'm packing. Is there somebody here that God wants you to do something? Say it out loud. I'm packing. If someone right now won't put their hands on their hips, say, no, I'm not doing it. Say, ah, yes, I will do it, Lord. I will do it. The blessing of the Lord was on all for Joseph's sake. I believe God wants to anoint you and where you're at, this church is blessed. I believe there's an anointing on you and God's going to use you and this house is blessed because of you. Whatever your assignment is, if it be a usher, it be the sound, it be prayer warriors, whatever it is, I believe this house is blessed because of you. Every single one of you, whatever you do, this place is blessed because of you. People are blessed because of you. People are delivered because of you. People are saved because of you. Verse 7, lie with me. <laughs> the house is blessed, everything's working out. I'm doing what I'm told, I'm right with God, I'm not pouting, I'm not hurt, I'm not wounded. Lie with me. And he said, no, it's evil. And it betrays God and it betrays my master. There's some temptation. I want you to say it right now. No. No, say it out loud. No. If you fall in an area, get up, wipe yourself off, ask God to clear your conscience, and say no. No. Verse 8, he refused. Verse 12 is a little interesting. The garment was in her hand. Has anybody here been lied about and they have false evidence about you and you didn't do it? They said something about you that wasn't the truth. Now, 10 years ago, it was more than the truth. But God's done a work in your life and it's not the truth. Has anybody betrayed you? Has anybody came against you? Has anybody tried to harm you? I'm gonna say this to you. To get to the palace, you have to go through the betrayal. For you to be promoted, there will be betrayal. There will be a garment in her hand. There will be false evidence. Verse 20, for something he didn't do, listen, he was put in prison, confined. Verse 21, I'll close with this. But the Lord was with him. But the Lord was with him. Stand with me. Stand with me. But the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. I love you, Lord. And I live my voice. To worship you. You don't have to play. Oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I love you, Lord, and I live by voice. 
voice to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you Again, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your in a machine, in a machine, in a man, in a man, in a man, in a machine, in a machine, in a machine, Hallelujah, 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 glory to Jesus, hallelujah, I will bless your name, I will glorify your name, hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord everybody. I'll just say it to you right now. You point back at me, I'm gonna point at you. Promotion. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody, promotion. Come on, real promotion. Hallelujah. Promotion. Somebody point at me right now. Promotion. Come on, everybody. Promotion. 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 It doesn't come from the west or the south or the north or the east. But he removes one and promotes another. He's promoting as never before. I said God is promoting as never before. Promotion, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, a lot of phenomenal, hey, so far this month we have given $64,000 to missions. We'll, we'll, try, th we'll try that again. I, this month we've given $64,000 to missions. I don't think the month is over. Hallelujah. Beautiful. I'm going to announce life groups on Sunday. I'm 100% for life groups. Well, Pastor, you know, some people can gossip at the life groups. Oh, they can gossip in the sanctuary. They can gossip at staff meetings. I'm not worried about gossip. I believe God's people are good. I believe they take care of business. And I trust the life groups. What are you talking about? I trust the leaders. I trust the people. It's called a life group, not a dumb group. <laughs> you know, we're going we're gonna to have... <laughs> Those from Korea and China and Philippines, they're a lot better at stuff than some of us. We need small groups. We need places where people can care for people and love people. We need that. And they met house to house. You know, now that doesn't mean you have to go to one. If you don't, I'll think of something funny to say about you, but all right. But we want life groups. Amen. We want 25 by the end of the year. We want them doubling. So we're going to invite people. And there'll be new, new people coming. There'll be people coming. All the leaders, get right with God and make sure your heart's clean and your hands are clean. Because the people that go to your life group, uh, the blood will be on your hands rather than my hands. That's really why I want life groups. <laughs> They're wonderful. Come on, everybody. Wonderful. Wonderful life group. So we're going to pass it, and there'll be probably 20 new people, and there'll be 30 people, and then there'll be 100. How many seeing all the new people coming? Be kind. They're coming now. They're coming now. Don't ask them for money. 
Don't ask them if you can live with them. <laughs> Just love them. Look at someone say, our pastor, he's crazy, but we're praying for him. Come on, everybody. He's crazy, but we're praying for him. And then Pastor Pakhtar maybe is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. He, 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 he's the general that God's raising up. He's the only pastor bringing the Arab Christians and the Jewish Christians together in the Holy Ghost. He's just a tremendous man. So the men on the 11th at 9 o'clock, he's going to spend time with us. I'm going to be there. Sunday the 12th, we'll have them 10.30 in the morning. And we're going to have them at 6 at night. We're going to have a night with the rabbi. So let's just all enjoy it. Let's just all enjoy it. We're going to have, I, I believe there's going to be a, I'll just say it, a Jewish impartation. I just believe it. A Hebrew impartation, a blessing will go into the hearts. I think the church will be stronger and better uh, because of it. And then I want to give them a large sum of money. I want to give him an offering, even if it isn't the will of God, he'll come back here. <laughs> you know, I want to be something spectacular. Is that all right, everybody? Your tithe belongs to the house, but you know, offering. Just God will stir you. Someone here will give $100. You know, do the math. 100 times 400 is a lot of money. Hallelujah. Some of you will be so excited about giving to Israel, you'll rob a bank. There's all kinds of things going on here. <laughs> wow. What a night. How many, how many just love the Word of God? Let me see your hands. What a night. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, planted. Oh, let me just say this to you. I have a supernatural word for Sunday. I want you to bring everybody. When you fail, now what? I mean, God spoke to me in the night. When you fail, now what? How many need, how many here have had a couple failures? Let me see your hands. Yeah, yeah. fourth wife, but this one's going to be good. Hallelujah. There's going to be an anointing to raise people from the dead who have failed. There will be an anointing that people will be able to regroup and not be what they've done. but be what they're called to be. Hallelujah. Planted in the house of the Lord, you'll flourish in the courts of our God. Spirit of 
Oh